all right guys welcome back in this video we are going to be applying css style to our register and login page we're going to be using bootstrap and some css if you are if you are just joining us for the first time this is the fourth video in this user authentication series check the links in the description for other parts of the series of this video and then um, before we can apply any kind of static files to our Django app we have to first of all let Django know the path to our static directory which is the directory where we're going to place in our static files when i mean static files i'm talking about css javascript or probably image and to do that we can do that in the settings of py file so we have the settings of py scroll down you can put it anywhere but it's best at the bottom you can see they already specify a static url for us then yeah we're going to specify the location where we're going to create put the static file files and it's got the which is going to be a list of parts and first of all we're going to specify os so this should be in lowercase os dot part dot join and here we are going to join the base directory with our static directory that we'll be creating all right so with this Django we know where our static file is our static directory is i mean so this base directory we are not creating this out of the box is defined for us in Django. so if you head screw to the top you see where it was defined so let's screw here look at it it was defined here so that's how we're able to use it and the os was imported for us already so that's how we're able to use os as part of the chain so that's for this so we head over to our base directory outside the app but also in the same and points with the manage.py file we create another directory we call this directory static static that's what we defined there so in this place we are going to put in a css we can create another folder called css and then another folder called js and so if you have images you also place your images here though there are other settings we also we have to put for medium files like images but since we are not using images there's no need for that um, we are using just css and javascript so what i'm going to do now we just put it and put the bootstrap files and the static and css file and javascript file that will continue from there all right we have a bootstrap file bootstrap the meaning of css in the css folder and our custom css which is made on css and also in the javascript we have our bootstrap that means just js and the jquery okay so we can do with this for now so for us to link the bootstrap file and our css file to our register page or login page we need a base.html file which we're going to create in a template directory our template directory is in our app so in the template directory we're going to create another file inside app and we'll call this it can be inside app or outside the app we call this base base.html all right so this is going to be an html five template So here we're going to link our CSS and JavaScript. So to do that, we have to load the static files, and we do that in Django with the Jinja template of it. and load static. So with this command load static, the static files we be able to load here. If you don't add this to it. You won't be able to get it to work so here we link uh, using, and so I'll add a link we use the ginger template and format again and here we just write static and then uh, 
besides static, we specify CSS slash bootstrap. That's mainly. You can also use the CDN link if you prefer the CDN link. I just want to do this for beginner people's those are just starting so apart from using this in your register or in your user authentication you can also use this when building your app so that's why i just want to do this all right so the same thing for let me just copy and paste copy this and then paste it here then we'll change it from bootstrap to main okay we do the same thing for the javascript all right these are the links for the javascript file so next what we're going to do here we're going to simply create a simple nav bar so that we can nav navigate between the uh, different pages so i'll just copy a bootstrap navigation bar then uh, edit the links so that's what I'm going to do. So I'll just copy them, paste them here. All right. So this is just a bootstrap nav with some links. So here we're going to check if the user is logged in. We want to see the username, which is welcome, the business name that is logged in, then the logout and button. So the logout link then if the user is not logged in we want to see the login the register route and also the login route so let's quickly double check if everything is in point on point All right these are the little pages that we want to navigate to if the user is not logged in then if the user is logged in we want to navigate to the and then here we're going to create our dynamic uh, block content block and we're going to put in the call it block content and block content Okay, so in our um, login page and the register page, we're going to extend this base file in our login and register page. So we head over to the register.html. Here we are going to extend our base.html file so that the register page we know where the bootstrap file and the CSS file are placed. So at the top, we just uh, use the same uh, ginger uh, format here. Again, here we call extend. We call it base dot html. Sorry, it should be inside. Yeah. Yes. So, and uh, we should also for some reason i don't know why it's supposed to work but we still have to load the static <coughs> so call load static okay that's for the base file then for that we don't need this header here because the header is already in the base file so we can take this out then the body we have to wrap it around our block content content and we have to end the block content yeah take this out and block content all right okay i think we are good to go then for this the first approach i'm going to show you 
let's just take out this um, form <coughs> leave the you can leave the CRF token first let's take out this form just rendering the form as it is for a start okay when the form as it is for a start let's quickly save all our file and let's check if our server is started okay let's start our server say python python So I started. Alright. Oh, we are getting template error. Let's double check. It says um this dot HTML must be the first tag in the template. Alright, so let's see what that is about. Let's go to the register page again to the top. Okay. Let's place this on the top first. Alright. Uh, that's true because the static file is actually in the base directory in the base uh, file I mean sorry so let's save it and see if everything works back let's check if our server has restarted let's refresh and check if HTML okay yeah because the CSS file that I placed in it, there are some predefined style in the CSS file. I will show you that later. I just want to know that as the CSS is applied, so you can see that it's taking shape already. Our nav bar is here. That means the base.html is applying applying properly. The CSS file is applying properly. So let's quickly to let's start bringing the beauty, making this look beautiful. I mean, so head back. Then uh, in our register page, we just let's put this inside a container, a div called container, this is a bootstrap container. And we should take everything away from the wall. Sorry, it should be inside lock here. Alright, then let's give this container a few magic from the top. Let's say top and bottom manage file. Already, and in our CSS file, I defined <coughs> a style for another div called form container. To save time, I just defined the style now already for our CSS, our custom CSS file. I'll show you that now. So, wrap everything around. Yes, these two days we yeah all right that's good okay if we save this and we go back to refresh you can see everything is beginning to take shape <coughs> now the bootstrap is not applying yet because we're not applying any bootstrap though the normal page bootstrap is applying for the nav bar so but our custom CSS is the one doing this which I'm going to show you in a moment. To apply Bootstrap to our form, the reason why I want us to use the form just like this, so that we can get these um, uh, jingle validation errors in case when someone posts in the wrong company name or wrong uh, password and all that, these validations error and app test, we can get them. That's the reason why I want us to use this form directly. So we head over to the form file. Yeah, we're going to apply the bootstrap control class to the widgets of this form feed. So we write widgets, which is going to be the dictionary. And the first feed is email.
and here is going to be the form dot text sorry text input I'm just going to take in attribute and here we can specify the different form attribute we want a class for the form and the class we're going to specify as a form dash control which is a normal bootstrap form class <coughs> same for the company name so we'll create a widget for the company name which is forms attributes which is also going to be a dictionary which you have a class and then So the form dash control okay so let's test this to add let's see if our bootstrap is working fine and uh, I hope there's no error if we look at how it is now so when we refresh you can see the bootstrap form class has applied to the first two you can see the email has changed and the company name has changed so we'll apply the bootstrap to the last end so let's just copy and then do not forget comma and then this is gonna be the phone That's for that. Then for the password and confirm password feed, remember that the user creation form is using the model form. And when we are defining the model, we didn't specify the password and password confirm feed in the model, though they are there. So if we add the model like this, it will not work because the model form does not have password and confirm password feed. So we have to define those feeds ourselves by calling password one set it equals to form dot chart feed and then we're gonna give it a label of password then we're gonna give it a widget which is gonna be form form dot password input and here it's going to take in the attribute here we can specify the bootstrap class it's going to take a form True. Yeah, we can also specify mass mass length. Let's say twenty characters. Okay. So we'll copy it, which is gonna be the same thing for our Confirm password feed. Only we have to change the label and the name to password two, and then yeah, it's gonna be the label is gonna be confirm password. Alright, these are the password fields. <coughs> if 
we save our form, our upper yes, error, and we head back to refresh. What's going on? Our server is running, so why is it? Alright, now we have our form feed, bootstrap styled. So let me show you the CSS file. So you'll be wondering the because the CSS is a bit much, so I didn't have to. I don't want to start coding CSS in the video. So I'll just walk you through the. Where you see it? Where's my static file? Okay, in the static file. Here the body we just give the body a position of relative or sizing height and the background color which is that kind of thing lightish blue that you see here then the nav link we just improved increase the font size and font weight then the nav brand we just the same thing the font container will give you the width of 60 percent position relative and little border radius on the padding top and bottom left and right on the margin also to make it centered then background colors and all that boss shadow give you the boss shadow also then on over we set the insert and values also so that we, we have this nice and over effect when we over over the form you can see this effect boss shadow effect all right that's for that and then each other step we have again yeah for the form we improve the form a little bit don't want to just use just bootstrap you know we we'll give it a padding and here we we'll remove the outline we we'll give it 100 percent we'll remove the border we we'll just specify background color for our form and the label we we'll give the font width also that's for that and also for the login form which you've not applied anything yet we also specify style for the login form i will try i'll put the link to the, the github link to these files in case you want the css file you can get it in my github and so we specify also style for the login container and then that's for that all right so we have our register working fine for us the errors are still the same the form feed the bootstrap form feed is normal is straight so we are using the bootstrap form so we are not changing anything here just the bootstrap form then our errors are still there like this method is because you will get the built-in validation and messages for the register and authentication user authentication and system so when your password does not match you get the message of password does not match and so on and so forth so that's for that so in the let's head over to the login page now a login page also we are going to extend the base and um, the base.html so we'll Alright, we also load our static. Alright, that's for that. Then, for that, we don't need the header again because it's already coming from the base of the HTML. Then, our login page is today. So, I'm going to show you another very simple way we can also apply style to our um, bootstrap form. So, let me just take this out here won't delete it but let's just take it out first and cut it out and let's let's put it at the bottom for reference then then yeah what we do simply get this a container class just like we did before on the, from the top bottom then here we define the div with our form and login container which we define in uh we define the style for the login container in our CSS file. Ok, 
okay so here we can create another form method also post we can bring in our CRF token cut this out and put this on here then we'll use the normal HTML bootstrap form and the final div form group I think that's form group with our label should we take in image first with our label then we have the input the one important thing is the name so the name should be equal to the wherever the login form feed here which is you have an email here so if you have email here whatever you have here should be the name of the html form that you are defining to replace it so in this form feed we'll have an email there They will have a postcard, a postcard class of form. Um, so this is the easier uh, method to use. It's very easy to use. If you decide to use this, you can use this. If you decide to style it from the Django with it and uh, widgets, and me, you can also do that. Then here we can just put in the password and then. Then change the name equal to password, which is the password, which is the feed that we define in our, in our password feed. Yeah, password. All right, then we we'll still need these uh, errors. We'll take this out, we'll copy, copy this. Inside the form, we can paste it in then we define our button class login all right I think we are good to go so if we test it out Run the bar to let's refresh this. Okay, let's head over check the link if the link is working. And okay, now login. Sorry, we didn't put everything inside the block content, that's why it's not showing our block and dynamic content block. So we have to put this is uh, this all the content inside this block content if not you won't see anything in the page that's why we have a black blank page we then we actually don't need this form again i just place it there for reference but let's just take it out we don't need it anymore here we end block content If we save this now and we refresh, good. We have our login form. Okay, let's just quickly apply the bootstrap class of test center here. So kind of place it at the center. Okay, so that's for that, and then okay, we have a register page sign up, uh, register page or registered up, and our login, our register. So let's quickly test it out. 
so let's uh, register on that email now let's register let's see lucky 12 company name test at company.com company phone number let's make some few changes then the password give it the password of Okay, we'll hit create account now. Okay, because our account was created and we direct to the login page. Then we can sign up for the email we just uh, registered now, which is lucky 12. We are getting the raw test here, which is not proper we say reverse for logout underscore view not found logout underscore view is not the valid view function or pattern name ok let's confirm our logout and uh, URL page first of all let's change the HTML form to a password feed is not proper for us to be seeing that. Then we head over to our base and the URL feed. Let me check. Head over to here's our URL. Go to URL the panel. Let me check what's our oh. Can see the name for our URL or logout URL name is a logout dash not underscore so that's how we are getting the error so if we head back head back to our piece.html on fist start now we save it and that should work so if we refresh now all right you see welcome test to company and we now have our logout button here everything is working fine okay so these are the two ways you can apply css and bootstrap to your form you can either define the form like this and specify the name of the form to equivalent the name of your jingle form name or you can use your jingle form and apply the bootstrap classes to your widgets and also also in the widgets in the form widgets not only the class attribute you can put you can put every other attribute let's say if you want to put a placeholder we can also add a placeholder to it here you can give in call it placeholder which you put in the value also for the placeholder let's put it and say email address So if we head back and then let's log out. Okay, we are logged out and let's head back to the register page. You can see the um, placeholder is working. Okay, so this is how we can style our register and then login page. We, right, everything is working fine. Now we can also check for if we are still getting our error messages. So if we put in the right email and let's put in the wrong password and then uh, hit login you see we also we still get our invalid credentials and error message so that shows that the error checking is also working so right it's getting too long I'm going to end it here don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button more videos are coming and then very soon don't forget to subscribe thank you